So my name is Rosanna Lastra. I am a board certified pediatrician and the founder of Head to Toe Pediatrics. And I offer house calls for families in the Tampa Bay area that covers San Pete, uh, Tampa, South Tampa, and within 30 minute mile radius of downtown St. Petersburg. I like to do some educational sessions for families. So if you follow me on social media, you'll be up to date on all these fun events that we host for everybody. And we try to do as many free events as we can. And today's event, we're gonna be talking about diaper care. And I will be using my babies here that we will be going over different diaper care for both girls and boys. And after we discuss how to take care of private parts for boys and girls, we'll talk about some of the frequently asked questions that I, as a pediatrician, commonly get so that you guys will know how to handle these concerns. So we'll start off with diaper care for baby girls. So in terms of the most typical things to be aware of for baby girls, one of the biggest things that parents will frequently get questions about or have questions of is when baby girls are first born in the diaper area, the vaginal area may appear quite swollen. There may be some bruising and that is normal when baby girls are born. So we're gonna take our diaper off here for our baby girl. And the most common thing is how are you gonna wipe in the diaper area? So for baby girls, the most important thing to know, and I'll use the diaper as an example, is that you wanna be wiping front to back. So you always go front to back, front to back, front to back. If there is a lot of poop, especially at the beginning, the poop will be what we call meconium, which is very dark, very sticky poop. You may have to rub a little bit more around the back area to get the stool out, but never go back to front. And the reason is because for baby girls, their urethra is very short compared to baby boys. And if you're bringing stool forward, that can get into the urethra and can cause some urine infections. So important front to back. And then for when you are wiping around the vaginal labia, which are the two lips, it's okay to separate those softly and gently to wipe in that area as well, front to back. You don't have to do that with every diaper change. and you can do it at least once a day when you're going in the area or when you're doing a bath. You can also separate the labia a little bit and then wipe that area. But you also don't want to leave it completely um, without wiping it at all because it can accumulate some of uh, the discharge that baby girls can have or some of the stool that may get in that area. So that's why you do want to be also separating the labia and wiping, but not very often. So that is wiping for baby girls. We talked about how swelling and mouth bruising can be common at the beginning. The other thing that can be common for baby girls at the beginning is that they may have some vaginal discharge, which may be mucus, yellow, white, or sometimes you may even have specks of blood in it. And that is normal during those first few days of life. And it usually goes away by about a week of age. And the reason is because of the maternal hormones that are passing through. So it's kind of like a little baby mini period, but it shouldn't be as heavy as what we think of for female periods. And it will usually only just be a couple of specks of blood and it may be red or it may be brownish in color. Um, you may also notice some red orange stains in the diaper area that does not have any of that discharge or that mucus. And that is what we call uric crystals. And that is also normal during the first few days of your baby's life. And the reason for the uric crystals is that the kidneys are just starting to learn what to do and how to function outside of the womb. 
So until they get things figured out, they're going to release a lot of the urate and those crystals will, will appear in the diaper area as red orange spots or an area in the diaper that may be like a blob of red orange color. That also should go away within the first week of life. And that you also notice in baby boys. So the crystals can also be common and you'll routinely see them with wet diapers, but you may see them with stool diapers if they peed and pooped in that same diaper. So now we're gonna talk a little bit more about boys and diaper care for boys. So we have our baby boy here. We're gonna take out our diaper. So for baby boys, um, it's completely different in how you wipe and how you care for their diaper area. So baby boys, their urethra is much longer. So there's not that concern of getting bacteria into the urethra that could lead to urine infections. And in fact, urine infections are much, much unlikely to happen in boys than they are to happen in baby girls. So it's very rare for a baby boy to have a urine infection. So for the wiping for baby boys, you could pretty much wipe in any direction. So you could go around, you could go backwards, you can come forward. The things to be aware of are around the scrotal sac, with the scrotum, which are the sacs here. You want to lift those and wipe underneath because sometimes things can accumulate under there. And you also want to move them from the sides because they can also accumulate through the sides. So um, the other area where you wanna check is the penis. You wanna bring that up and wipe underneath the penis into the area where it also kind of attaches to the scrotum because those are areas where stool may hide and um, when babies are also born, they will have some like thick uh, skin or like a, it's like a thick skin layer on top of their skin from like the placenta when they were, when they came out and from being in the womb. So that takes a few days to go away. And that may also be, it looks like yellow crusties is what you're going to be seeing. And that may also accumulate around that area. So you want to be wiping that as well. Um, but otherwise, yes, there's no direction, specific direction in which you have to be thinking about when you're wiping for baby boys, just more so making sure you're getting those hidden areas that may be missed. And then the other thing for baby boys is considering whether they're circumcised or not. And that will also change how you do the diaper care for your baby boys. So in boys who are circumcised, usually the circumcision is recommended to be done within those first 30 days of the baby's life. And most routinely, if you're having a hospital birth, it'll get done while you're at the hospital. So when you come home with your baby, your baby will already be circumcised. When your baby is circumcised, it's important to do a gauze with Vaseline and put it in the area for those first two days after the circumcision with every diaper change. And the reason for that is to help the area heal and to avoid it from sticking to the diaper when you're closing the diaper. And you're gonna do that with every diaper change. And that gauze after two days, once the area is looking healed, you don't have to continue to use the gauze but the Vaseline you should continue to use for at least a week. It can take seven to 10 days for the circumcision site to heal. So I usually recommend continuing to use the Vaseline for up to two weeks so that you're making sure that nothing is sticking to the diaper. When the site is healing, you may also notice some of uh, yellow white crust that's called granulation tissue and that's healing tissue. So that is good to see. After, immediately after the circumcision, there'll be some swelling and redness and that is normal, but it routinely gets better after a day or two after the circumcision. So you shouldn't see that after two days that your baby boy has been circumcised if you're gonna be doing a circumcision. Most important thing to keep in mind 
is to check for peace. We want to make sure that after circumcision, the baby boy has a wet diaper. And you'll find that usually they may keep you at the hospital to monitor for about 30 minutes after the circumcision. And that is one of the things they'll be checking for in addition to bleeding. So with circumcised boys, bleeding is the other thing to be looking out for. If you notice a little bit of specks of blood in the diaper area after circumcision, that can be normal and it shouldn't be a sign of concern. If you're seeing blood oozing or is trickling out continuously from the site, like around the site of the circumcision, that is something that you do want to talk to your healthcare provider for because it may need some attention. If there's going to be any bleeding, it's usually happened right after the circumcision, which is why they monitor. But if it happens later, it may be if there was some injury to the area that just caused that little bit of bleeding. Um, and that is pretty much the whole care for circumcised babies. If the baby boy is not circumcised, the big important point to remember is that the foreskin will retract on its own when your baby boy is older and typically around three to five years of age. So you do not need to be pulling back on that skin during diaper changes to clean under it. You will actually notice that you won't be able to pull back on the skin when babies are little. And some cultures or some people may have heard that you want to be pulling back on that skin until it bleeds every day because you want to be keeping the area clean and you want to help that process. But you do not have to do that. And we do not recommend that you retract the skin at all. Um, so that is something uh, important to be aware of. And again, that foreskin will start to retract, which means that it'll start to pull back on its own around three to five years of age. Sometimes it may even take longer than that for the skin to pull back. As long as your baby is still peeing, it doesn't look like the urine is accumulating underneath the foreskin where it's swelling and there's no pain or concerns with the peeing. There's absolutely no concerns with that foreskin. Now, um, when the foreskin does start to retract, that's when you do want to start pulling back and cleaning around that area. But otherwise, until it does that, you do not have to do anything different around that area other than just the routine wiping and making sure you're checking for those hidden areas that we talked about. Any questions so far about boys versus girls? If you do have any, make sure you leave them on the chat so that we can cover those. Um, things that are common when baby boys are born, similar to baby girls, there could be swelling and some redness. The swelling for the baby boys is routinely around the scrotal sac area. And most things being common, that tends to be from just fluid in the sac. And sometimes one side of the sac may look bigger than the other side. The doctor will be evaluating to make sure that it is just fluid and things are okay to continue to monitor. Um, sometimes, very rarely, there may be an enlargement of the sac on one side more than the other if there is a hernia. But again, that's very rare. Most typically, it's just fluid. The doctors will be checking for that. But if you have any concerns because you're noticing that there's a difference on the sizes, then do discuss that with your pediatrician so that they can evaluate for that. That swelling in the scrotal area for baby boys when it's due to fluid could be there even up until six months, but it should continue to get better and not worse. And most commonly, it gets better within the first week of the baby's life. Um, and sometimes it even completely resolves by that time. But that is uh, things to keep an eye out for. And then just the same as with baby girls, baby boys can also have those urate crystals. So if you notice any red spotting in the diaper area, that can be normal if it's within that first week of the baby's life. All of these normal things that we talked about, other than the scrotal swelling for both baby boys and baby girls, usually goes away by two weeks. 
um, the meconium poop, going back to that, which is that dark, sticky, tarry poop, that starts to transition around three to five days of baby's life. So that's when you can expect for the poops to look more what we call yellow mustardy colored or grainy. They might have some seeds for families who are breastfeeding, or it may just be um, less sticky or, and not as tarry for families who are formula feeding. So that's the time range of when you can expect these changes. Perfect. So that gives you a quick overview of baby girls versus baby boys. Now I'm going to share my screen as we go over some frequently asked questions. Can you guys uh, see my screen with this diaper care? Yes. I'm going to assume yes, because I'm not hearing no from anybody. <laughs> yeah, so, you're good. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Mm -hmm. So um, I will be emailing this out if you don't have it already, but it kind of goes a little bit of the baby girl and baby boy stuff that we talked about. And then my top three frequently asked questions. The first one is, how do I know if I have the right diaper size? A lot of times you'll notice that the right diaper size is not perfect for every baby, and they only make certain sizes they usually go by newborn size and you have like one two three and it goes up by numbers but as your baby's growing they may be in between sizes and you kind of have to figure things out on how to make that diaper size work but some tips uh to know if you have a too small of a diaper and i'm trying to put the diaper back on my baby so you can see so too small of a diaper, you will notice that it may leave some marks, especially around the leg area. So here we have my baby with the diaper. So if you're noticing marks around the thighs or around the waist here, which is usually where you're gonna have the tightest part of the diaper, after you take a diaper off, that may mean that the diaper is too small. Or if the diaper kind of goes all the way past the belly button, I'm um, sorry, that may mean that the diaper is too big. If the diaper is falling out on the back like this and you're seeing a little butt crack, that may also mean that the diaper is too small. So if the diaper is too small, you wanna go a size up. It may mean that it may be too not perfect fit if you're going a size up. So some recommendations are to fold the diaper and you can fold on the back and the front if you feel like you're in between those sizes. Um, for if the diaper is too big, sometimes you may see that the diaper goes above the belly button area or way up towards the back, or you may see that the baby may be frequently leaking urine or things may be coming out of the diaper and sometimes uh, even with the small diapers, you may see some leakage of the urine or poop that leaks out. Um, there's no perfect way. It's just trying, trying, and trying different things and see what works best. But some things, if the diaper is too big, it would be to try to size down. But if the size down is also a little too small, also folding it, and that will help. The other thing is how tight you tight around here. Um, this is not the best diaper and it'll depend on the diaper that you have, but uh, the most common disposable diapers you'll be able to bring forward and then the other side, you can kind of cross them so they're like this. And that usually is a good tight and tight in terms of tightness, as long as you're not getting any of the lines around the belly area or the legs, that would mean that it's too tight. So that is one common question. The other question is, what do I do if the diaper is near the umbilical stump? And we kind of uh, addressed that a little bit already, but the important thing is the when the umbilical stump, which is the dark, is gonna look like a dark um, spot or thing that sticks out from the umbilicus. Once they cut the cord, they're gonna leave a little bit there. While that is healing, you don't wanna get it wet. 
So it's important that the diaper is not covering it because when babies urinate, that could get it wet. So what you would do is you would fold it over like this to make sure that you're leaving the umbilical stump open when you close. And hopefully this is not too small on the video, but you want it like that so that the umbilicus is available, just like on the baby ear. It's because you wanna keep that dry until it falls. Once the umbilical stump falls, then you don't have to worry as much about folding the diaper unless it were that the diaper is too big and you're in between those sizes where you kind of need to make it a nice fit snug. And then the third question that I commonly get is what do I do if my baby has a diaper rash? So diaper rashes are very common in babies because they're in a diaper all the time. They pee very frequently. They poop very frequently. Sometimes you're changing diapers like crazy and the irritation from having the diaper or the irritation from the constant wiping can, propose, uh, can lead to having diaper rashes. So um, for the diaper rash, if it's lasting longer than two to three days and it doesn't seem to be getting better, that's an indication that you wanna to talk to your pediatrician. But when you first see a diaper rash, uh, some of the things that you can use, I have my best um, like remedies over here. Zinc oxide is gonna always be kind of the first go-to and a lot of diaper creams have the zinc oxide. The most common one is desitin or butt paste. Those are some of the common ones you'll find over the counter. And you can look and read on the label, the back of it, to see the concentration of the zinc oxide. The higher the zinc oxide, the better. Zinc helps with healing of the skin so that's why it's great to use when you're first noticing diaper rashes. Another one that I like is called Calmaceptine. And this can also be found over the counter. And it's a pink cream. Actually, both Pinvax and Calmaceptine can be pink. Although some of the recent Calmaceptine ones have been, you may also find some white ones. But these are um, also very thick. So you want thick creams for any of these. And then you can apply these in the diaper area. And usually all of these will make the diaper rash get better within a day to two. Um, something else that you can use is Vaseline if you have that at the house. And you can put that to help uh, provide a barrier, especially if you're noticing that you're wiping a lot and you're wiping frequently. You can do the Vaseline so that when you're wiping, you're not always rubbing against the skin of your baby so that you're helping so that there isn't a diaper rash that develops later on from the constant wiping. Um, and then if these are not doing the trick, it may mean that the diaper rash may be due to a fungal infection or it may be due to a bacterial infection and there are other creams that may be needed, which is why you should talk to the pediatrician after two to three days of a diaper rash that is not getting better. And those are the top three questions that I frequently get. And hopefully you've learned something new from today's presentation. But that is all that I have for you guys today. Unless you have any questions, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen here. And if you wanna come off mute, if you have a question or drop it in the chat, I'd be happy to answer those. And if no questions, if you want to drop in the chat, what is one thing you learned that you took away from today's presentation that you didn't know before? <laughs> Thank you, Kat. Thank you, Eunice. Perfect. You guys enjoy the presentation. I hope you got something out of this today and that it will help prepare you better to take care of your babies. Congratulations. Oh, the wiping basics, yeah. <laughs> Wipe, well, it's always good to, to know about the wiping and it's easy to forget. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys took away something from the presentation. 
and I'll be sending out the Diaper Care 101 handout that I shared with you guys today, as well as the link to the presentation once I put everything together. Thank you for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you guys at other presentations in the future. Um, I do a book club. If you guys wanted to join for that, I can also send details of that in the email. And we usually, we're currently going over uh, a what to expect during the first year book. And you don't have to be reading the book to join the book club. We just kind of hang out there and talk about being a parent. But thank you so much.